All right, this is a coffee talk with Mr. Anger without the coffee breath. And we are reviewing science pace, physical science pace, 1109. This is a uh, topic, significant digits, sig digs we call them, or significant figures, and understanding when the zeros are significant and when they're not. That's one of the most difficult parts about this concept. You need to read through the rules that are in your pace, and there are several of them. Some of them just really make sense. Any number that is not a zero is a significant figure. The big picture about significant figures is they have to do with measurements. Now, I didn't put measurements behind these, like meters, centimeters, but all of these would represent measurements. The more accurate the measuring device, the more digits we can have, the more zeros we can have after the decimal, that, and you would assume in that case that the measuring device is extremely accurate and you could measure all the way out and know that these are indeed zeros. That's what significant figures mean. A number like simply 20,000, you don't know if that was just a guesstimate, if it was uh, measured with a really inaccurate device and so they rounded it off to 20,000 because they couldn't be super accurate or whether you know, maybe that's really 19,997.5 if you could measure it accurately. But since you can't, it's just rounded off. But in this case, when we start doing calculations in science, we have to be very concerned that we are using significant figures or sig digs. Of all the rules, knowing when zero is significant and when it's not is the most confusing. And I'm not going to take credit for this idea. We had a student who graduated from our school and went to college, and her college teacher taught her this little technique for keeping it straight, and it really helped her. And she came back and told me about it. And ever since then, I've been sharing it with students, and it's very helpful. The key is to notice whether the number has a, a decimal that is absent or present. Let me put the word decimal in front here. If the decimal is present or if the decimal is absent. Now you see the connection? Atlantic Ocean, absent. And over here, the Pacific Ocean, the decimal is present. Okay, so you see the the PP. Now, what happens here? If the decimal is present, as in these first few numbers, then these are like balloons. And we have an arrow that's coming in from the Pacific. And so we're shooting arrows with a bow and arrow. And here comes the arrow. And as it's flying toward this number, and notice the decimal is present because it's coming from the Pacific. It goes pop pop, 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 and then it lodges on the first non-zero, non-bubble, non-balloon, and all of those are knocked out. So how many sig digs are left? Two. Here comes the decimal again. I mean, the decimal's present, so it's coming from the Pacific Ocean. Pop, 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 dunk, gets stuck in the two. How many significant digits are after that? Thomas? Oh, how, many, how many digits did not get blown up? We have four. All four of these then are considered significant figures. This one, there's no decimal present. So here it's coming from the Atlantic because the decimal is absent. Here it comes. Pop, 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 and then it gets lodged. So we have one significant figure. This one, we have three zeros on the right, just like we did this one, but the decimal is in the number. What this means is when somebody measured this, whatever it is, grams, let's say, they were able to measure that it was 51 grams exactly out to three decimal places. That's how accurate the scale was. So here comes the decimal from the Pacific because it's present, and it gets stuck right away. So all five of these are significant figures.
Up here, notice what happens. It's present, so it comes from the left. It gets stuck right away, so we have four significant figures. Now, one of the things that the pace mentions is that when we have a lot of zeros, if the measurement is measured, like in this case, to the nearest tens, but this is the digit that's not as accurate, they put a bar over the zero that it is significant to. So in that case, you would count these two, you would count this as a significant digit, and then the zero in between. So we would have four significant digits. And if you want to think of it this way, the arrow is coming in from here, it pops this one, but it gets stuck right here. All right? So this has protection over this balloon and keeps it from popping. Here, this one's protected, but if the arrow's coming from the Atlantic because the decimal is absent, it pops this one, pops this one, and it gets stuck right here. And so in this case, we have how many? We'll put it in Florida's panhandle. Three significant digits. So let's review this again real quick. With significant figures, we're looking at when are the zeros significant. That's the most difficult thing. First thing is to determine if the decimal is present or absent. If the decimal is part of the number, then the arrow comes from the left, from the Pacific Ocean, and pops the zeros until it hits the first non-zero digit, and then it gets lodged there, and you count the rest of the digits as being significant. If it's absent, it's coming from the Atlantic and pops the zeros until it gets stuck, and then again you count. Hopefully you got it. All right, thanks.